people. There's one thing that we all admire when you're getting into a job. When you hear that a job has traveled, mm -hmm. we are really very excited. <laughs> yeah. And I can tell you from experience that uh, even getting on a plane and getting to whichever country is not an easy experience. <laughs> yeah? Mm -hmm. And especially if your travel is more than 30%, you'll get that you desire that but then when you start traveling every other week it becomes a problem you, either you, you you know it's not something you're used to you know your family is there it's something that you never used to go out and there's so many challenges that might come up so the first thing that needs to happen is you need to begin from your family setup let your family be the first support system Hi and welcome to another video and uh, if you're here for the first time my name is Nelly and on this channel we are all about uh, talking or rather sharing content with my audience on career growth, uh, personal growth and generally just to make you a better person and most importantly to position you for those jobs um, that you dream of. So guys in today's video I am quite excited because I have a guest with me who will be taking us through a topic which I believe is very important, especially um, for careers if you want to take your career to the next level. So the topic that we want to talk about today is how you can make a career change or a career transition at any point of your career. So help me welcome my guest today, Mr. Emmanuel, how are you? It's a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure too, thank you so much for coming. So I want you to look at that camera and tell the audience who is Emmanuel? Uh, thank you very much for joining us on this episode. My name is Emmanuel Makoa, commonly known as Emmanuel, the career growth coach on LinkedIn. I am a career growth coach with an experience of about eight years. I have worked with so many people within this space, and I am very excited to be here today to just try to share a little bit more about how you can transition at any given point in your career and still make it welcome. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, that is quite exciting. And uh, Emmanuel, I've followed you on LinkedIn. Uh, I think that's where I knew you and um, for some time. And of course, one of the reasons I asked you to come and have this conversation with us is because I believe from the interaction, from you, what you share, that you're very passionate about careers. So I think just to start us off, maybe would you tell us briefly how you get yourself? How did you transit into career coaching? What is your background and how did you get yourself here? Thank you very much, Nelly, for that question. And um, just the way you follow me, I also follow you on YouTube. <laughs> uh, the reason as to why I found myself here starts all the way. You know, they say that sometimes the experiences that we go through in life shape what we become. Yeah. I remember very well that uh, I had an opportunity to go through university and um, at the point of going through university, I, I was privileged to take a course in finance. But things, they didn't work the way I expected. So I was, um, I had challenges, you know, getting my certificate and this made my life a bit difficult out here. And as I was trying to look for solutions on how I could solve my own problem to get into, you know, get a good job. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're young, you want a good job, a well-paying job. Yeah. And that is something that really was, uh, you know, propelling me. So at the point of trying to solve my own problems, of course, I had worked in different places, just trying to convince people to give me an opportunity without my certificate. And thank you very much for those ones that gave mm -hmm. me an opportunity. At this point, when... I was just trying to solve my own problem. Then I got too interested to just want to become a career coach so that I could help somebody else who was going through the same problem like I was. And I remember very well that immediately I transitioned into this and started doing it full time. I got another employer who wanted the skills I had. So I got into employment with one of the um, NGOs and they gave me a very nice opportunity. They paid me quite well and I did this work for five years. That was career coaching? Career still. coaching, mm -hmm. you know, mentoring young people mm -hmm. and I could do this very passionately. So at a point when I thought uh, my calling was again coming back, I now decided to 
leave employment again and now just go back to doing this full time. So currently I'm doing this full time, but consolidatively I have done this for the last eight years and I have worked with so many individuals and that's oh. why I'm very, very passionate about. Wow, thank you, thank you. And now um, back to our topic, I think allow me to go back to a classroom setup so where we want to start with a basic definition. Yes. Maybe will you just define or rather tell us what is a career change or a career transition? Thank you. So a career change or a career transition can simply be defined by, you know, very few words. You could just say that you're moving from, you know, one type of employment to another you're moving from one industry to the other. So once, once you're able to see those two things happen, when you're having a role that is totally different from what you're doing, then that, you know, a transition has happened. So that is basically what uh, many people are grappling with today. They have a job. There are things they probably don't feel so much aligned to. They want to do something different. Those are the people who qualify to, you know, to transition to something new. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Now, having said that, my next question would be: What triggers a career change? I mean, I'm 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 in my car. I'm in a specific job currently. So, at what point or at what time does one feel like I want to transit or I want to change and get into uh, this career, a different career? So it it, it it first of all begins by you know sometimes you might have your own internal self assessment. You know sometimes you. Just think about your own life, where you're coming from, the way, the way your job is moving. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that might trigger you from, you know, moving from one career to the other would be, one, you're working with an organization and there are things that are not making you happy. You don't mm -hmm. feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. You feel like there's something missing. You feel like there's something else you admire out there. At that point, you can actually start working your way out and transit into that new. Mm -hmm. So a tra career transition can come if wherever you are, the environment is not uh, really what you expect. A career transition can also come if your values and your passions shift. You know, we are all defined by values and you know the passion that we have. Absolutely. So sometimes, if I, for example, like you know going out and creating content like we are doing today, mm -hmm. I will be passionate about it. In as much as yes, I'm an accountant, but I have a feeling towards going that way. So if my values and my passion change, then I can actually transition into, into that and I'll be very comfortable doing that. The other one is when you have uh, you know, gone back to school and taken a new certifications or you've gone to school and added maybe another degree, that can also be the right uh, time to do it. Mm -hmm. Another thing that can also trigger that would be the economic environment. You know the things that happen. And I'll give you an example. COVID came in. We all went through COVID. And COVID shifted the way we do things. So if out of the experience that COVID brought, some industries went down, others came up. Oh, yeah. So if you look at tomorrow, if you start projecting five, ten years from today, and you feel like what you're doing today will not be there those years, then this is the time for you to start working towards um, you know, a transition. So those are three key issues that I'll be able to pick up and say, this one would really help you to, you know, will showcase or will manifest in you to know that you're really headed for a transition. Okay, thank yes. you. All right, thank you for that, uh, Emmanuel. I think that is uh, very profound. Now, um, another question would be, you see, if you, for, exam for instance, uh, people will transit into different careers at a particular level. And uh, maybe let me give you a practical example. You've been doing this job for like uh, eight years, like yes. you've said, and now you want to get into another job. Yes. So it is, um, it is assumed or rather uh, the reality would be you might have not have exact exposure or interaction with the duties of that other job. Yes. So then what this means is that you lack the skills, the knowledge that is required. So how does, how does one really uh, get to bridge that gap? You, maybe like like um, another example would be like like somebody is currently an accountant. They want to transit into a HR job. They might not be having the HR skills. So how do you bridge that gap? At what point does someone start? That's a very good question, and mm -hmm. I would say that uh, that's where the biggest problem is. Mm -hmm. There are people who really want to go into something, mm -hmm. but then they are held back because they feel like their skill set are the skill sets are not aligned. The first place you need to begin from when you are actually desiring to transit 
starts from the point of doing a self-assessment. Yeah? Once you have an inventory of your skill sets, and I have so many skill sets myself, but I will always look at what is important at any given time. Look at yourself as a supermarket. Mm -hmm. A supermarket has everything. Mm -hmm. But everybody that comes to buy into that supermarket mm -hmm. goes to buy something specific. So look at yourself like an inventory of skills and only bring out those skills that matter the most. So in this case, if somebody is working, let's say this person is an accountant, and they would want to transition into HR, the first thing they need to do is how can they, for example, uh, you know, get the certifications they need. So they might take certifications while they are still accountants. So I'm not saying you leave your job today. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is have a plan. Have a plan to, you know, to transition. Mm -hmm. Then begin first of all by going to school, getting the certification. It might take you about two or three years. Then from there, just at the place that you're working, go to your boss or you know, go to the HR department and volunteer so that you can start practicing. So if there's a recruitment, you can actually participate in that recruitment for free. Mm -hmm. Don't charge anything. Continue with your accounting job. Mm -hmm. So you might take on internships. You might also be able to take in uh, projects. This is the time for you to now start seeking out uh, freelancing projects. You might say that there's a small startup somewhere where you need to just support them in the recruitment process, sometimes for free. So. To reach, for example, where I have reached as a person, it was, there was a point where I was doing things for free. Mm -hmm. You're doing it passionately, but then you do it for free so that people can see that you have some value to add to, mm -hmm. you know, to the process. Mm -hmm. So what I would encourage you to do is have a plan, assess the skills that you have, then from there, begin to work towards that goal. Volunteer, showcase. Showcase that given this opportunity, you can actually do it. And interestingly, there are people who have had a transition within the same organization. Mm -hmm. Because what they did was to show that they have the value that they can give. All right. So what comes out, uh, maybe from what you've explained, what has come out so clearly is the bit where somebody can, the, at the starting point where someone can start if you want to transition is uh, volunteering, of course, uh, doing a lot of freelance work and even utilizing your current organization for somebody who's already employed to at least, uh, I would call it sort of getting your job expanded that if you're an accounting, you can be able to take other jobs that are really not within your JD, which I think is quite interesting. So another question would be, what, how would one identify the consistent skills? Like, uh, for example, you've said you you some you're multi-skilled you're skilled in so many things and i find that with so many people and uh, i really believe from where i sit that um uh, there are some consistent skills that you can easily transfer into a different job yes. yeah so how would one identify them like i maybe i would say i currently have skills which i can use in another job but i don't even know so how can someone identify consistent skills and it begins first of all by understanding the different facets of skills that you have we always have what we call hard skills or technical skills. And we also have what we call the soft skills or transferable skills. So in this case, once you understand the hard skills, for example, in HR, we have you know, the recruitment process coming up with the, you know, the requirements, you know, checking the needs that are within the organization yeah. and you know, coming up with the specific roles that are supposed to be filled for that role. Mm -hmm. So that is, you can call that technical. But then at the point of you standing before people and just talking, mm -hmm. that is a soft skill and it can be transferred from one organization to the other. Mm -hmm. Now, let's, let's, take a, let's take an example of uh, somebody who has done sales. Mm -hmm. I have a background, for example, you know, having done quite a bit of some sales. Now, you can transfer sales to so many skills. I mean, to so many uh, fields. And I would say this because sales is simply communication. So how you can actually be able to do that would be, for example, if today you want to go into, let's say, you want to go into fundraising and partnerships, mm -hmm. for example, and you've been a salesperson all through your life, the only skill that you need to transit with in this case would be take your communication skills. Mm -hmm. Because you're still going to convince donors the same way you convinced customers. That's true. So that is transferable in that place. If you want to transition into a small business, you want to be a small business owner, you will still need to talk to customers for them to give you business. So you're seeing that this, you know, this, this communication, which is the anchor of sales, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. can move from one facet to the other. The other yeah. yeah. So the most important thing here is identify what you call transferable skills. The skills like communication, leadership. Those ones can move in any field that you'd want to, to take it. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, the analytical skills. Of course, mm -hmm. these are skills that would now help you to, you know, to just be able to analyze different situations mm -hmm. and see how to provide solutions. Mm -hmm. And then now the last bit of those skills would now be, those ones are personal, they would come back to you. Those ones are skills that build resilience in you mm -hmm. because the transition process is not easy. You really have to have self-motivation mm -hmm. as you move along. So one of the other skills that you need to have are skills that will be able to build resiliency. You know, the self-assurance that, yes, I can still make it. You know, the self-motivation. So some of those skill sets that build your resilience are the last set of skills that you also be able, you be able to need. Mm -hmm. But then the first one and the second one are the major ones. Mm -hmm. The third set of it would just be personal, personal to right. see you through the, the whole process. Wow. All right. That's fine. And uh, maybe another question would be just, um, of course, this, this video, rather this content is watched by a diverse uh, range of audience. I just want you to, uh, to address um, people in different age categories yes. so how will someone there's someone who's watching us they're in their 20s they're in their 30s they're in their 40s mm -hmm. i don't know if people change careers at 50s you'll tell us <laughs> yeah so will you just tell us how will someone successfully go through that transition at the different um uh, maybe the age bracket someone is in 20s 30s 40s or even 50s uh -huh. <laughs> so let's look at the different age brackets mm -hmm. most of us live college or leave high school when you are close to 20 years. Mm -hmm. Now, 20 years, the advice I give my clients is if you're at 20, you have the leeway to explore. You can touch this, touch that, touch that. That's allowed. Mm -hmm. But then, within that age bracket of 20 to 30 years, please find out something that you're going to do in your 30s and in your 40s. Meaning, this is a point of identifying what you need to do. Mm -hmm. But now if you move with the same problem in your 30s or in your 40s, mm -hmm. then you lose track. So begin first of all by just, uh, you know, touching this, touching that, then identifying the things that work well with you. Mm -hmm. And also looking at if, 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 if you're going into a certain industry, ask yourself, will this industry be relevant 5, 10 years from today? Because right now we're having the conversation on the future of work and we're having a lot of disruptions in, in technology and things like AI. They are disrupting the way jobs are being done. Mm -hmm. So it's important to be on the right side of technology. So it means that if you are an accountant today, ask yourself, will the accounting field be relevant tomorrow? So if 10, 15 years the accounting field will be relevant, mm -hmm. what you need to do then is identify that and then start building that. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing here is to build your experience and skill set mm -hmm. at the age of 20. Then at the age of 30, when you transition to 30, is now just to be able to add on the foundation that you had laid mm -hmm. in your 20s. Mm -hmm. Then at this point, you're very strategic in terms of the certifications and the education that you take. So if, for example, you started as an accounts assistant, then this is the point for you to see if you have all the certifications you need in the accounting field. Mm -hmm. if, if, if you've not learned about, uh, for example, there are these... Um, I would say there are these softwares that you use in various, if you're in HR, there are softwares that you need to use. Yeah. At this point, this is the time for you to get your, your certifications right. If you're thinking, for example, that you are a HR or you're in, um, you know, in accounting and you'd want to transition, for example, into non-profits, for example, mm. this is the time for you to add on other skills like uh, you know, project management. You might be a HR but within a project management setup. Yeah. So you, you're very targeted in the exact skill sets that you need for you to be able to establish your, your, your career even stronger. Yeah. And then something else that you need to do at this point is you know, the mentorship. The mentorship and also the networking that you do. You're not doing the same networking like you did in your 20s. You need to identify people who are actually going to help you establish your career even stronger. Mm -hmm. Because between mm -hmm. the ages of 30 and 40, this is when you're establishing your career and making the roots even deeper. Then by the time you transition into your 40s, mm -hmm. between 40 and 50, this is the time for you to eye what you call the C-suite uh, roles. You eye the senior management roles. You want to drive strategy. Mm -hmm. you, you've learned your craft for the last 10 years and now you just want to be at the decision-making table. Mm 
So this is the time where you're now having the, the, the transferable skills, the soft skills, you know, your leadership, you know, your emotional intelligence. This is the time that these ones are able to come up. So at this point, the kinds of trainings that you need to attend are the trainings that we call uh, the, you know, the ones that build on your soft skills, on your leadership. Mm -hmm. So this is the time you'll see, for example, people going to Harvard, you know, to just take a short course. This is the time to take those courses that are able to build you, the soft part of you, mm -hmm. you know, the leadership part of you, okay. the part that can understand a crisis. You know, you're an organization that has made a loss. Mm -hmm. How do you address the media? Because probably at 20 or 30, mm -hmm. somebody might speak in a way that is not mature. But at the age of 40 and 50, this is somebody who can actually understand, you know, the dynamics of business and know what to say. Mm. And, and things not to see. So that's yeah. ideally what I would uh, you know, advise the different age groups. Oh, wow. That's, that's great. And um, thank you for that. Thank you so much for that, uh, Emmanuel. I think mm. from this conversation, really uh, what I'm picking also, uh, apart from the many other things, is that uh, soft skills is quite important, especially in um, this journey of career transition or a career change. So another question, I know, I, I know I'd asked you previously about uh, bridging the gap of skills, but I want you to talk more uh, deeply in terms of um, in a case where someone is transiting yes. from uh, a different industry or into a different industry, yes. uh, like you mentioned, maybe someone is coming from a private sector and going into an NGO. And uh, that, for that specific example, I think that's one, one question that I get from so many people, that transiting into uh, the NGO space, for example, is not very easy. Yes. That is something that most people uh, struggle with. So how or what does someone need to do, especially we're speaking to someone who wants to transit into a different industry. Mm -hmm. You can transit different roles, but maybe the same industry still. Maybe let's say you're in manufacturing, is just get, get becoming a HR to an accountant, but still in manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So you want to come from a HR to an accountant into a, in an NGO or, a, or even in government. So now address, uh, maybe talk to us about how do someone, how do I make a, a successful transition from, um, different, I mean, into a different industry? That's, that, that's pretty, the, what I would say, the core of, you know, effecting your transition effectively. That question would really answer that. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do is, I would mention the skills assessment. Sitting down and just taking a pen and paper and writing the kind of skills that you have, you know, from 1 to 40, whatever skill sets that you have. Then look at which ones do you have, you know, more strength on, which ones uh, do you need to develop. One of the things that you need to understand is how the different industries function. Mm -hmm. And I'll be very specific. Mm -hmm. The NGOs spend money. The commercials attract money. So you need to understand here when, when you're sitting on a budget, then what does that budget do? For an NGO person, the budget goes to the community. Mm -hmm. Then this other side is that you want to restrain, you know, you want to keep as much as you can to the, to the company. Yeah? So understanding how your skills, uh, the kinds of skills that will be required, and you can be able to enumerate them from one maybe to ten, and say that number one is the most important skill. Yeah? Maybe let's talk about finance. Somebody has uh, maybe what you call uh, financial controls as the most important skill to just avoid issues around, uh, you know, maybe corruption or things that, you know, money that is being spent for things that don't add value. Maybe that is the, your main skill, your main hard skill. So what you need to do then is you need to either, you need to go back to school and study that. You can attend some industry specific training programs that would actually help you to learn that if you've not been able to learn, then start practicing the same, yeah? So if you're not practicing, you could easily walk into the next department. You realize that there are organizations that have uh, departments that are doing different things. So it's finance, but they're doing different things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even there are people within procurement who sit even under finance. So it's important for you to understand the things that you need to do and start practicing on those things. Mm -hmm. I cannot overemphasize the practice. Why? It is very difficult for you to convince someone if you've not practiced it. Then secondly, you need to understand the transition from one end to the other. If I'm applying for an NGO role, there's something called, they actually call them uh, stakeholders. The biggest name in the NGO space is stakeholders. So in the commercial sector, we call them customers or clients. 
But in the NGO space, you call them uh, stakeholders. So how you write it on your CV, at the point of view applying for that role, needs to mirror the exact thing that they're looking for. Because the customers might be the same. The stakeholders are probably the same. Even in government, government is same like um, you know what 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 you'd ideally call the NGO because they also have you know shareholders. They're not making profit as much, so it's important for you to exactly understand how you need to tweak your language even during the application process. Then the other thing that you also need is to brand yourself towards where you want to go, and that is where the question came from. Do you do you compete today? Are you competing yesterday or are you competing tomorrow? So one of the things that I've done, for example, not all the jobs that I've done are on my LinkedIn profile. Not that way. And that is a very deliberate thing that I did. I am more focused on where I'm going than where I'm coming from. So once you understand yourself that you're in this space and you want to go to the NGO space, you can start using the language that is relevant towards that, that kind of industry. And maybe, have you ever interacted with someone who's made a transition and uh, maybe a few years into uh, that new job, they feel like they made a wrong decision? I think they are, because I think I've interacted with a few people who someone makes a transition, of course, when you were starting this conversation, mm -hmm. you took us through what will trigger um, a, a, career, a career change, yes. like someone not being comfortable in their job, maybe even economic, uh, tough economic times, maybe the industry which will pay higher. Yes. So what, especially for people who will transit or who will get into those uh, new careers and uh, later realize, oh, I made a wrong decision. What do you think some, what are some of the mistakes that people do during that process? that will land someone into a regrettable state of, and even wanting to come back to what they were doing? Very beautiful question. One of the mistakes that people make during their transition period is peer pressure. You might work in an organization and everybody's leaving and going to the NGO space. And you just feel like it's your time for you to do what? To also transition. Yeah. The, your values and your interests, at this point, you're being clouded by emotions. And it just means that you're making a wrong choice. Number two, you might be somebody who's not guided by facts, naturally. There are people who are not guided by facts, naturally. Mm -hmm. They are guided by emotions. So whatever happened to work today is what leads to an, an immediate transition. And you just find yourself having made wrong decisions. That's why you find people, for example, they resign, then they regret tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what I can just be able to tell you is plan. Look at, you know, look, at, look at what is positive and what is a challenging and prepare for it early enough. But another thing that I also would want to encourage you is in building your resilience, you need to accept that fine, things might not work, but you've made a transition. As you regret, let it not cloud your mind. Work towards, you know, you know they say that if you fall down and stay there, that is what is a problem. Mm -hmm. But if you can fall down and rise up, that is exactly what is needed. So I would not tell you leave that type of job. You know, I always tell people build resilience, but then you're eyeing something that is better. Mm -hmm. Because you might just be right. It's only that you landed in a company that has, you know, values that don't add up to what you expected. Yeah. So getting companies that are even promising to pay you higher and they pay you less happens. But that means that you, 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 you just move on. And I'll give you a particular example of a client I had. So. This client, uh, we worked together, they got a role, they signed the role, but at the point of signing the role, they had been recruited through a recruiter, mm -hmm. yeah? And that's why it's important to be very careful on the third party recruiters. Mm -hmm. So when this, this person was recruited, at the point of them, you know, giving notice the other side, the, you know, the person that was recruiting them declined. They had already given you know, they had already given notice, but then this other side, mm -hmm. the, the person said, I'm not taking it because it's, the person is too expensive for me. The client refused? The, the yeah, client the, client, declined. the client declined. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I'm also just, I'm just compelled to also tell you that when a recruiter comes to you, also understand how the recruitment process works. It's mm -hmm. better when you're dealing with a company direct, you'll be able to make a, a, you know, a quick decision and a decision that is more informed than when you're dealing with a third party. Mm. So that is just a disclaimer that I remember to bring it here. Mm. Yes. Wow. 
Mm. Thank you for that. And um, Emmanuel, I think one thing that um, stands out is that a change, irrespective of where you're making it, uh, mm. comes with a lot of new things and certainties. Yes. I mean, you're going to a job that maybe you've never uh, formally done. Yes. You've done it either through, uh, through volunteers, through your job being expanded, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Now you're going there signing a contract and you're employed fully. Yes. So I really find, or rather feel, a transition will come with a lot of unknown outcomes. And maybe just getting back to our previous point is that um, that, that would be uh, some of the things on a Samanga Vitu Kwa ground is different. Eh? Yes, you yes. go there and you find like what you're expecting is actually not what is on the ground. Yes. So um, I'm just wondering how can someone deal with that? And this is um, a common that there could be some sense of anxiety yes, because you're really not sure of what you're expecting. So how can someone who's going through that process deal with that uh, career change anxiety? So what happens in this case, um, and, and I'll give you a very practical example. There's one thing that we all admire when you're getting into a job. When you hear that a job has traveled, mm -hmm. we are really very excited. Exactly, yeah. And I can tell you from experience that uh, even getting on a plane and getting to whichever country is not an easy experience. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. And especially if your travel is more than 30%, mm -hmm. you will get that you desire that. But then when you start traveling every other week, it becomes a problem. Either you, you, you know it's not something you're used to, you know your family is there, it's something that you never used to go out and there's so many challenges that might come up. So the first thing that needs to happen is you need to begin from your family setup. Let your family be the first support system. They're the ones who can encourage you, they're the ones who can tell you, you know, we understand what you're going through. They can sometimes even finance you when things are not working because they have to work with you. There are people who are affected the most. Mm -hmm. So if you have a family or some friends, those are the people that you can work with and also share the problems with them. Another thing is identify somebody who you can actually work with as a mentor or a coach. I work with my customers all through the transitions. And sometimes when they go there and face a challenge, they come back to me and tell me, Manuel, there's this that I'm not understanding. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give me? So we would look at it and say, okay, this is, this is an organizational uh, culture issue and you might not be able to make it. So what do I do? They, sometimes they tell me they want to resign, but I tell them, okay, we have an, identified the problem. Let's look at how you can survive through it as you look for another role. Mm -hmm. So another thing that you need to have is somebody who can hold your hand. A mentor might be somebody within the same industry. But that person that coach, coaches you is somebody who can, uh, you've actually identified as your coach mm -hmm. who can actually hold your hand together. So to me, all class that I work with, it's a journey. Mm -hmm. There are people I've been with for the last eight years and we are moving from one role to the other together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those are the two, three things that I'll be able to advise people to do. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah, so we're almost uh, wrapping up this conversation and uh, just... Um, uh, of course, as we before we close it, I would really like you to just now, having gone through all this conversation, you've told us how someone identifies that they really need a change, how yes. they can deal with the challenges that comes with that change, and even how they can prepare themselves for that change. Yes. So, um, what would you say? It just maybe as you summarize, what tools then does someone needs to have? Right? I mm. need to make a career change today. What are the tools holistically that you recommend me or you recommend for me to have as um, I prepare for a successful career change? That's a very beautiful question. You know, they say that uh, if you fail to plan, then you're, you're, you're planning to fail. Eh? So it begins first of all by identifying the skill sets. Mm -hmm. And then one of the tools that you need is, of course, reworking out your CV, mm -hmm. reworking out your LinkedIn profile, reworking out your cover letter, your bio, anything that you would need to do your application. Mm -hmm. Ensure that you can bring out, you know, you, you can align your CV or your LinkedIn towards that. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example. If you would want, for example, transition into consultancy, just an example. Mm -hmm. You want to go into full-time consultancy. Rather than talk about the job that you do, now begin to position yourself as a consultant. Mm -hmm. Then you just talk the, about the things, the value that you can create to, you know, towards uh, you know, the people that would come your way. Mm -hmm. And begin to share content that is related to that. So don't look at where you are. Look at where you're really heading to. Mm -hmm. And just put the systems that need to help you uh, succeed there. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that you probably need is the CV, the LinkedIn, and all that. 
The second thing that you also need is a support system. As I mentioned, you need, you need some sort of mentorship and also coaching. But secondly, you also need to put your family in a way that they can also understand where you're coming from. Yeah, so that support system that you need is also very important. Mm -hmm. The other one is do enough research. Mm -hmm. Research is something that I cannot be able to, you know, say enough. Mm -hmm. Research, understand what is there today and what will be there tomorrow. Then the last bit that I'll be able to mention around, um, around this would be, once you've been able to research, then begin to build what we call a skills, I call it a skills portfolio. Mm -hmm. It's an inventory of your skill set. And you're going back to think, you know, you're going back to remember the things that you did and just documenting that. The certificates that you got, the recognitions that you got, all these things are going to be very useful when you're transiting. Because somebody might want to ask, show us uh, your experience with working with various stakeholders. And you have photos that you've actually taken with your, you know, with the county government, for example, or government officials. That becomes very useful at the point of you trying to transit because you can put that even on your, you know, on your portfolio and somebody can be able to see that. Mm -hmm. So it's important for you to uh, understand that you need all these tools for you to be able to transit uh, effectively. The last one would be on now the education and the training part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So continuous learning means that you also identify either the providers that can help you whether it's, it's online learning or you have to go back to college, you need some of these certifications. You need some of these uh, trainings. And all this will actually add up to help you uh, get to where you really want to get. Then the last bit is please build your own internal resilience. Wow. It's not an easy journey. Wow. It's not an easy journey. At some point you'll get broke. And somebody might tell you you made a poor decision and you'll blame yourself for the rest of your life. So build your savings. Build everything that you would need to use when things are not working. It is you at the center of everything. That is exactly what I would say. All right, so thank you. And I think that was quite interesting. And uh, as we are almost coming to the end, I don't know if you have anything, any general advice you'd like to give to someone who's watching us. Now that we've come to an end, I know that we cannot exhaust everything. Yes. My advice would be start doing it today start putting the the plans today for you to transition if you, your desire is real to transition begin to identify the colleges begin to identify the certification begin to identify the training look for a mentor look for a career coach look for the systems that will actually be able to help you get to where you want to get but have a plan don't just wake up and say, I have left this type of employment. I'm no longer an accountant. This is what I want to be. No, it doesn't happen that way. So it might take you, you know, three years, five years to really get to where you really want to get. But remember this above all, do not compete in the past. Do not compete presently. Please compete in the future. Build the formidable skills that will help you tomorrow than today. Because most of the competition is there today because people are competing from a historical perspective. Like for me, I told you that I was in finance. Right now I'm in coaching. Mm -hmm. I can tell you from where I sit that coaching might be relevant in the days to come. But finance might shrink in future. So that is how I look at it from where I sit. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. So if there's someone outside there who's looking for a career transition uh, coach, someone who is at just at that level and they, they've seen you and they'd like to reach out to you, so how do they get you? So on LinkedIn, uh, you can get me, you can just search uh, Emmanuel, the career growth coach. You'll be able to connect with me. My numbers can be seen at that platform. I'm also the founder of Fresh Jobs Kenya. So Fresh Jobs Kenya is a platform that has jobs every day. I put there about not less than 100 jobs every day. So you can be able to apply for your jobs. and. No, website? it's a website. It's our website, Fresh Jobs Kenya. Fresh Jobs Kenya is my website. I'm the founder of that website. So I update jobs every single day. So if you go there even right now, you can see a lot of jobs that you desire to transition to. Other things that I do is um, I provide one-on-one -on -one coaching on transitioning. I provide support on uh, how you can do your CV, do your LinkedIn. So you can, you can pick whichever one works for you. 
and we can, we can be able to walk the journey together. So historically, I have worked with so many people, I cannot even count. I think what, what is really intriguing is somebody who came to me at the age of 57 years mm -hmm. and got a country manager's role wow. at that age. Wow. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, it's, it's possible. Once we put everything together, then we're able to go. If you want to call me or WhatsApp me directly, my number is 0722. Three two six eight five two zero seven two two three two six eight five two. Then we can pick the conversation from there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. This has really been an interesting conversation and I have learned a lot. Uh, next time I'm thinking of making a career change now, I have a coach to go to. So it's been quite interesting. Thank you so much for coming. And Thank guys, so as we come to the end of this conversation, as always, I say this channel, we are here um, basically or rather majorly for job seekers. If there's a job seeker or uh, a professional outside there who is struggling with one or two three things you can always leave in the comment section who do you want us to bring next what do you want us to talk about next and if this conversation has uh, added value to you please don't forget to like share this content so that it it reaches a wide uh, a wider audience and of course also subscribe we are gonna leave uh, all the details for emmanuel on the comment section the link uh, to his bio on linkedin to his uh, website and of course even his number so if you're looking for a career coach to help you take your career to the next level then you've got all the details so thank you so much for watching and uh, guys as always i'll see you in the next video bye bye